After the historic and longest vote for House Speaker in over a century, California Congressman Kevin McCarthy has been elected Speaker of the House. Well, it took only four days and 15 rounds of votes and a lot of drama for that to happen and to clear the way for Congress's newest members to be sworn in. One such member is Texas Democratic Representative Greg Kassar, and he joins us now from Washington. Uh, first, congrats to you on being sworn in at 2 a.m. on Saturday morning. Good afternoon. Thank you all so very much for of having me. No, of course. Glad to have you with us. Uh, you documented the journey of this week with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on our Instagram and on your own. Uh, what was it like for you as a first-time congressman, and uh, how did it feel to finally again be sworn in? It's a real mix of emotions. On the one hand, I choose hope over frustration. I came in being sworn in alongside so many other young progressives who believe in a Congress that works for working people, a Congress that's compassionate and thoughtful and caring and that doesn't, you know, puts away dysfunction and is unified. So I feel a lot of hope around that and responsibility, but also some real anxiety because the extreme right that was willing to shut down the Congress in this way for the first time in 100 years, the problem wasn't us not getting sworn in. The problem is, would they be willing to continue to do this in the future? to get things that they want, which are clearly things like cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, and really targeting the struggling, the sick, and our seniors. And we have to come up with a strong strategy to make sure that we can have a Congress that continues to work rather than one that devolves into this kind of extreme right-wing attack and dysfunction. Let's talk about this week in Congress. It was a bit like the wild, wild west. Speaker McCarthy did make a lot of concessions in order to be elected. And while that has finally been resolved, should the American people be concerned about what that chaos says about the next two years in Congress? I have that concern. Uh, this, the rules package, that the concessions essentially that Speaker McCarthy conceded to the kinds of folks that denied the election results, who continue to lie, um, constantly on so many different issues. We're, we're going to continue to see that kind of dysfunction and division. But I also feel hopefulness because we were so united as a Democratic caucus against those sorts of lies, continue to push a message of optimism to the American people. And I hope that we can connect with people's best angels and work together on passing good bipartisan policy. Um, while defending against the worst of what could happen in Congress. So I believe we need to compromise to do good for our constituents without compromising our principles. One of the issues that you are passionate about is immigration reform. Uh, President Biden visited the border for the first time over the weekend uh, in El Paso while facing praise and criticism across both parties over his policy. Uh, you called the current immigration system not a rational one. What needs to change? I believe we need a surge of resources not to enforce against people coming from countries that are falling apart. We need a surge of resources so that we can bring people in, care for them, make sure they get connected to jobs, and then continue to enrich our country. We don't need more stigmatizing, more fear, and more propaganda. We need to recognize uh, that immigrants add to our country and should be given the same rights as anybody else. Immigration, obviously a huge issue. You have a lot of other things you'd like to get done as well, including protecting abortion rights, climate unionization efforts. The night you were sworn in, you actually tweeted, we're ready to battle against extremism nonstop these next two years. You mentioned the division in Congress. What is your strategy to try to get some of these things done in a very divided Congress? I believe one in defending against the worst things we will fight nonstop if it's, that's what it takes to protect things like Social Security and to protect our seniors and veterans. Two, I believe we can still work on a bipartisan basis on things like immigration reform or protecting our dreamers. Young people that were brought here as kids shouldn't be separated from their families. And then third, we can work with the White House on executive action. Just recently, even before I was sworn in, I thought I would be a member of Congress at the moment, but I was still a member elect when we were proud to applaud the White House on allowing medication abortion, that is FDA approved medication, to be mailed from blue states into states like Texas. That way we start chipping away at things like the abortion ban in Texas. And we can do that by working with the Democratic White House. All right, again, congratulations to you and thanks a lot for being with us, Congressman Greg Kassar. Good to see you. Thanks so much, everyone. 
Hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.